let this so off center. Either way, I do good. Anyway, so as y'all know, the last video I did Breath of the Wild two notes. So I'm I'm gonna do a string of note videos. Obviously, I just did Breath of the Wild two. Here's the, here's some more Breath of the Wild representation. I forgot I had this shirt. To be honest with you, I cleaned it, put it in my wardrobe. I forgot it was there. I need to go through my wardrobe and get rid of shirts I don't really need anymore for when I move. But that's besides the point. So we did Breath of the Wild notes. I'm gonna do a Kingdom Hearts three somewhat complaint video. I love the game, don't get me wrong. I brought the deluxe edition, I enjoyed every minute of it. That's a video for a whole new level. And then a Pokemon Sword and Shield video, and then I might think of some here or there that I'm mostly probably gonna do in between Let's Plays. But this one's just so many topical and I've had these ideas in my head for so damn long that this one's about E3 2019. <clears throat> And more specifically, the games I saw that I liked. And what I noticed was kind of missing. And if I get to a game, I'll mention it. And it'll be on the... might have been a floor-only game. Like, I've got it kind of categorized into several different areas. 29 release dates. 2020 release dates. Release windows. And then what was missing. So, for the 2019 release date, we have Star Wars Jedi, The Fallen Order, or just Fallen Order or whatever. Speaking of that, it was the game in the form of cover this week. You know? But, um, it's got a lot of promise, and it looks cool, and I've always enjoyed Star Wars. The Battlefront games were casually disappointing. Fun casually, but nothing you could really sink your teeth into for a really long time. And it's supposed to come out November 15th, 2019. So I'm looking forward to that, but not as much as some of the others on this list. Just because there's promise behind it, but it's EA. So you never know. Death Stranding, November 8th, 2019. Now this one's kind of tipping it, because this was actually announced the week before E3, and Sony wasn't even at E3, but I'm counting it because it was so close. Again, another game with a lot of promise, but a lot of ambiguity, ambiguity to it. That sounded weird. It's really hard to say for some reason. But the next one is Onanoka. It's a Square Enix game. It looks like kind of the same vein of like Bravely Default. Nah, not Bravely Default. Yeah, Bravely Default. Octopath Traveler and I Am Setsuna. Yeah, those games. It looks kind of like that. An interesting kind of oldish, modernly looking RPG, and it's supposed to come out August 22nd, 2019. Next is Control, which comes out August 27th, 2019, and this is one that was, from what I understand, on the floor, but it wasn't shown in any press conference, but it was shown off last year during Sony's press conference after Resident Evil 2 remake its announcement, and I just, I want to play it so much. And the other one that was also apparently floor owner floor only was the Dark Pictures Man of Midian, which as I understand it is made by the people who made Until Dawn, but it's being published by Nameco Bandai, so it's getting uh, a wider console release. And it's supposed to be out August 30th, so that's like a string of August games right there. And then of course you have Pokemon Sword and Shield, November 15, 2019. I'm going to be getting Sword because my brother-in-law already ordered Shield. Pre-ordered it. Uh, Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 and Fire Emblem Three Houses. Uh, Ultimate Alliance comes out July 19th next month, and so does Three Houses, the 26th of July. But even before that is Super Mario Maker 2, which comes out tomorrow, as I'm recording. So it'll be out by the time this is uploaded, but June 28th, 2019. It was shown off in Nintendo's highlight reel or whatever. Honestly, out of all of those games, Star Wars, Death Stranding, Onanoke, Onanaki, Onanaki. I honestly don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. I honestly don't care right now. Control, The Man of Midian, Pokemon, Marvel Demolites, Fire Emblem, and Super Mario Maker. Out of two, out of all of those, the ones I'm looking forward to the most are Sword and Shield and Control. Man of Midian, kind of. 
Star Wars Death Stranding and Onanaki are kind of on the same playing field. And then Marvel Different Alliance and Fire Emblem come out next month. And Super Mario Maker comes out tomorrow. So, yeah. And Fire Emblem's more of my girlfriend's thing. So there's that. So for 2020 release dates, we have Final Fantasy VII Remake, which is supposed to come out March 3rd of next year. Super forward looking to that. I've only played through halfway through the first game, or for the original game. Not even on the original console. Like I, I played through, I think I got to the first boss fight on the PlayStation 2 when I used the PlayStation 1 copy. And I'm halfway through the game on my PS4. So there's that, but I'm really looking forward to it. It looks really awesome. And I'm excited to see how far it goes, because I'm pretty sure I've already played past the part where this game is probably going to stop. Um, Marvel's Avengers, which comes out May 15th, 2020, and it's looking hella fine. I'm going to say that. Sure, it looks like it could be a little refined more graphically and in other areas as well, most likely. But it's looking great. I'm super excited for it. I hope it's not like Destiny. If it's anything like Destiny, it's just going to destroy this game. Like, for real. As soon as this game was announced, I was like, great, we're going to get a Spider-Man-esque Marvels game. Like a story-driven game. But no. Because then, like, there was all these rumors of it being loot-based and then having, like, a Destiny kind of feel to it. And it's like, mm, you're ruining it. Don't, don't do that. That's it's literally going to ruin the entire game. None of those games are, like, hugely successful. Please don't do that. Please, please, please. I mean, if you have a multiplayer aspect aside of, on the side that's kind of like that, I don't care. As long as there's a main single player part that is really well done, really well story driven and all of that, I'm good. Uh, Animal Crossing, March 20th. It's, again, more of my girlfriend's kind of thing. But it looked super cute and super cool. Uh, like I said, it's more of one of my girlfriend's games she's eyeing. Fire Emblem Three Houses and Old Animal Crossing are definitely the big two for her. Uh, Watch Dogs Legion, Mark 6, 2020. Uh, again, this is another one of those games series where I love Ubisoft. Don't get me wrong, but Watch Dogs is a series that never connected with me. Because I played the first game and it was fun for what it was, but I just didn't have any motivation to beat it. I had so much hype for it and it was such disappointing. Whereas the second game had like some big improvements over it, but I had literally almost no hype going into it because of the first game. It's like the Unity Syndicate kind of thing, even though both of those games were really good. Syndicate suffered because of the first, because of Unity. It's like the second game suffered because of the first game. But this third game, this third game looks super awesome with being able to like find NPCs to take control of and then use them and level them up. Oh, the Grandma Assassins. Keep man. Watch <laughs> Ubisoft started strong and then ended flat. Pretty much. Too much Tom Clancy really. Um Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven, April sixteenth, twenty twenty. It's calendar it's one thing said. It's gonna be great. Uh, and then after that is the release windows. Uh, Kingdom Hearts 3 Remind DLC coming this winter, so most likely December. Sometime December. Um, it's Kingdom Hearts 3. I love it. The more the better. Granted, Oathkeeper is going to be released alongside this as free DLC, which you probably should just put it in the main game to begin with. Because it's freaking Oathkeeper. Now, what about Oblivion? Give me Oblivion. <laughs> More about this in the King Hearts 3 videos. Uh, Tales of Arise. It's Tales series. I love Tales. I still want Tales of Pseria. I've got Tales of the Abyss, Tales of Zestria. You know, there's a whole bunch of other games I want to try, but Pseria is like the most, I guess, the easiest, the most accessible one for me right now. So I want that, and then of course, Tales of the Rise. Looks good. Looks great. Uh, Final Fantasy VIII 2019, the, the remaster. 
it's not a remake. The remaster of Final Fantasy VIII. It's coming out sometime this year, 2019. Not really specified. Most likely September to November-ish. August to November-ish, most likely. I don't think it, I don't see it coming out in 20, 20, 2020. Do we? I don't see it coming out in December. Uh, Luigi's Mansion 3, 2019. What I don't understand is how does Animal Crossing get a release date? Not Luigi's Mansion 3. Maybe it did on the treehouse and I just never saw it or anything, but as far as I know, it's just 2019. 3 and Final Fantasy VIII are just 2019. They don't have a release date. Tales of Arise, I can understand. You know, it's 2020. It could be any time. Most likely the August to July ish area. That's what I'm guessing anyway. The cold came out earlier, but I'm just guessing. I just don't understand how Animal Crossing got a release date. Probably because everybody was like really speculating on what was happening with it, so they felt like they needed to give it a release date. But Luigi's Mansion just got 2019. And I think the reason they did that was because it's so predictably probably going to come out in October. Most likely. Um, and then Dying Light 2 has got Spring 2020. Again, the first game was really great. I'm surprised more people don't talk about it. It's a vastly superior version to Dead Island. Like, seriously. Dead Island's fun and everything, but the movement in Dying Light just makes it obsolete. That's all I'm gonna say. And then, of course... Oh, before I get to Missing, there was a lot of CGI trailers. Yeah. So I put CGI trailers to be announced. So games that were CGI trailers or just didn't have a release date or anything. Um, uh, Ghostwire Tokyo. That was literally the only thing in Bethesda's E3 that piqued my interest. Because I did a lot with Elder Scrolls Online, The Elder Scrolls, a bunch of mobile games. Uh, Doom Eternal was the only other game the, the only other big game they showed that's actually got a release date that people were anticipating. But, I mean, they showed... Or maybe I'm getting confused with Ubisoft. A couple CGI trailers outside of Ghostwire Tokyo. But Ghostwire Tokyo is the only one that interested me because it's Shinji Mikami. You know, the Resident Evil guy. <clears throat> so, of course, that one piqued my interest. And the other one... Is, I mean, if, you're, if you can see my shirt, then it's the sequel to Breath of the Wild. And like I said in the last video, I don't like it when people call it Breath of the Wild 2. It just it doesn't ring well with me. But I love it. You know, it looked awesome. The trailer was fantastic. Oh, it's great. Um, and then of course, we get to the missing. What was missing from E3 this year? Capcom. I don't remember seeing a single Capcom game. Uh, which means... Resident Evil 3 or Dino Crisis Remake did not rear its head. And everybody was assuming it was going to be appearing during my stuff at this conference because they showed off something last year at Sony's. Well, no, it didn't happen. Uh, which is a bummer. I hope, they, I, I hope one or either, one or both get revealed later this year at some point because I would be interested in Dino Crisis Remake because I never really looked that much into it. And of course Resident Evil 3 is Resident Evil and I love Resident Evil. Um, the leaked Harry Potter RPG. Yeah. I just... I really want to see what that's all about. Enough said. It's just so much hype. I want to know. Um, Beyond Good and Evil 2. That was missing. Although they actually had a reason. It's because they were skipping E3 to focus more on the game. You know, to get it more finalize and they can always reveal the release date or whatever if it's coming out later this year or next year or most likely next year 2021 I don't see it being any later than that 2021 to me is stretching it with how long this game has been in development so there's that the other two that were missing due to similar reasons was mentioned in Bethesda's conference was Elder Scrolls 6 and Starfield it's just not enough of the game yet it's too early in development according to him to show anything um, Bayonetta 3, Metroid Prime 4, slash a trilogy announcement, and Shin Megami Tensei 5. Those are all Switch games, I'm pretty sure. I mean, Shin Megami Tensei 5 might be coming out on more platforms and 
than just the Switch, but I know for a fact it is a Switch game. And of course Metro Prime 4 is skipping this year because they just restarted the entire game in January. Or they announced that it was restarting. Who knows how long they've actually been working on it. It's a whole nother story. But we know they restarted the entire game in January, so it makes sense for them to skip it. But then everybody was hoping for a trilogy announcement, and that just didn't happen. And of course Bayonetta 3. It's shown off in 2017. Messing MII. Uh, Skull and Bones, something Ubisoft's been showing a lot, like the, heavily the past three conferences from my memory, did not show up. I always loved the trailers, but then they actually show the gameplay, and I'm like, I don't want an uh, online pirate game. I mean, if it was a more story driven game, probably, but it's online, so no. But I miss it because of the trailers, are really good. Um, the Last of Us 2 and Ghost of Tsushima obviously are missing this year because Sony was missing this year. So obviously there are two heavy hitters. Aside from Death Stranding which got that announcement the week prior, we're going to be missing. So yeah, those are all the games I'm looking forward to and those were the bunch of games that were missing from E3 that I was interested in or missed seeing or that I wanted to appear. Like the League Terry Potter RPG or the Capcom teased or rumored remake games from RE3 and Dino Crisis and of course games that appeared previous years being at 3 Beyond Good and Evil 2 Skull and Bones Last of Us 2 and Ghost of Tsushima you know all that stuff just super hype I'm hoping this game is gone either way I mean E3 overall this year wasn't bad or good i say it's about average, you know, because Bethesda's was a complete disaster minus those two games. Go Tokyo Ghostwire's Promise, or Ghostwire Tokyo's Promise, and Doom Eternal, which everybody's always been looking forward to. Ubisoft's was slightly better in my opinion, just because of Watch Dogs Legions seems more promising to me than Doom Eternal, or it appeals more to me than Doom Eternal. And there's actually a lot of gameplay to it, which is something Ghostwire didn't have. But after that, it was just a whole bunch of Tom Clancy bullshit. And they ended on Gods and Monsters. Which is a CGI trailer with no announcement of a release window or date or anything. So, it's a cartoon version of Odyssey. It's made by the people who made Odyssey. They're just like, we love Greek mythology, we love the gods and monsters, so we're going to make a game about it that looks like a cel-shaded cartoon version of Odyssey. Yeah. Okay. Um, Square Enix was really good if you are an RPG fan. If you are not an RPG fan, you probably didn't give two licks of a crap about that conference until the very end game. Huh. End game. Marvel's Avengers. Because everything shown off before that was, like, strictly RPG. Microsoft's, you know, it's always a bag in the shell. I mean, you're expecting them to go all bananas this year because they had the floor essentially to themselves for, like, an actual platform. But this was underwhelming compared to what the hype was suggesting. Because sure, you got Xbox One Scarlet announced to be released next November with Halo Infinite by its side as a launcher because you know they literally need a game that's gonna sell the console like Breath of the Wild did for the Switch otherwise the console's gonna fail I don't even know what the Xbox One had at launch to help buy it same with the PlayStation 4 I don't know because I bought mine a year or two after it had already been out it was 2015 it was like May of 2015 and of course, Nintendo just killed it. They slaughtered it. They won E3. Hands down. <laughs> no qualms about it. And with that, 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 that's my list of games that I'm anticipating that I liked. And what I saw that was missing that I was sad about. It did show up. Oh, well. Tell me what games you liked the most from E3 this year and your overall thoughts and opinions of it. To me, it wasn't bad, but it wasn't good. It was just average.
it was a filler E3. The fact that Sony wasn't there really stamped that filler. So, who knows? Maybe they'll come back next year. Probably not. But I hope you have a great day. Remember, you can be the best you can possibly be. If you liked the video, give a like, comment, feel like this is special, awesome, subscribe if you haven't, they're ruling out, and ta-ta for now.